Hello again, gorgeous souls. Welcome to the December 2024 Starseed Astrology Forecast. We have some really potent stuff popping off this month. So I am here with you. My name is Dr. Heather Hobson of the Starseed Sanctuary. Thanks for joining me. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, please go ahead and do so so you can stay up to date with all of the fabulous new videos that will be coming out in December and after that as well. <laughs> okay, so let's talk a little bit about some of the starseed alignments, the asteroid astrology this month, and some key dates you're going to want to pay attention to. And we'll go over the calendar as well as some recommendations for this month ahead. Okay, so first off, we have the starseed astrology alignments. We have the Antares alignment. The sun will be conjunct Antares December 1st. That also coincides with the new moon that's happening November 30th, late in the day, depending on the time zone you're in, and December 1st, depending on the time zone you're in, early in the morning. Mars is going to be stationing retrograde conjunct the UFO galaxy in the Lynx constellation. This is a big deal because Mars only retrogrades every two and a half years or so. Then we have the Great Attractor portal. The sun is going to be in direct alignment with the Great Attractor, a cosmic anomaly that many astrologers refer to as God itself. It's a point where many different galaxies are moving toward and it represents a vast, immense point of consciousness that we can tap into. So when that's aligned with the sun, that's a big deal. Then we have the Apis alignment. The sun will be conjunct the main star in the Bird of Paradise constellation, also December 5th. We're going to have some interesting opposite alignments as well. So in the Northern Hemisphere, the opposite alignments are more visible in the night sky, and that'll be vice versa if you're in the Southern Hemisphere. So the sun will be opposite the Orion constellation, December 7th through the 20th. We'll have the opposite alignment with Columba the Dove, the 12th through the 14th. Then we also have the Atria alignment. The sun will be conjunct the fixed star Atria in the Triangulum constellation, one of the galactic fairy portals out there. So if you're into fairies, galactic fairies, that's a great time to get some sun on your third eye. Any of the conjunct or direct alignments are perfect time for sun gazing, for connecting through the portal of the sun with various different star families that the sun's aligned with on those days. And the opposite alignments are great for stargazing, getting outside in the night sky, absorbing some star codes and connecting that way as well. Then we're going to have some really potent alignments with the sun and Ophiuchus. The main one I've included in here is the sun being conjunct the third eye of Ophiuchus, Rasselhag, December 13th. That's right before the full moon conjunct one of the Orion belt stars on Alam on December 15th. And then we're going to move into the Ara alignment where the sun will be conjunct with the altar constellation, a really potent day to zhuzh up your altars at home where you meditate in front of. Then we have the big one for December, the galactic center alignment. So the sun is going to be conjunct the galactic center, the black hole at the middle of the Milky Way, which some refer to as the grand central sun. It is a sun that has evolved into something greater, a black hole, a portal, some even say. So that's going to be really prominent for us in the middle of December 17th through the 20th or so. Then we have the sun opposite Polaris, our North Star or Pole Star, December 19th. And then we have a big, long alignment with various stars in Monoceros, the unicorn kicking off December 26th, all the way through January 28th. A beautiful new moon at the end of the month, which will be aligned with Lyra and Pallas. And that will lead us into the beginning of the Lyra and Vega alignment with the sun, which kicks off at the very end of December, taking us through middle of January 2025. Then we have some interesting asteroid astrology. I mentioned this last month, but also important, I think, to highlight because it's such a long transit. Maki Maki, which is the higher octave of Uranus, is going to be conjunct Corvus, the crow, all the way through 2028. So our intuitive multidimensional consciousness is really heightening. More and more people are awakening to their multidimensional selves, the multidimensional nature of reality. And this alignment with Maki Maki and Corvus really highlights that extensively. 
Then in December, we also have the asteroid Sphinx conjunct Juno, and it will also be trying Saturn on December 9th. So there's this theme of mysteries being revealed in relationships, some element of taking responsibility, creating boundaries or some structures that weren't necessarily made apparent before. They're going to become apparent for many of you. Then we have asteroid Alexandria conjunct the Hyades and opposite asteroid DNA December 10th. So there's a theme of lost knowledge that can really be channeled through for DNA activation for third eye awakening on that day, especially. Then we have one of my favorite asteroids, asteroid Apollonia, conjunct the supergalactic center, which is the black hole in between the Milky Way and the Andromeda galaxies. It's going to be conjunct asteroid Alexandria and the south node, really signifying past life, past or parallel life consciousness, that's active December 20th through the 24th. So Apollonian starseeds are really awakening at this time. That's something that's really been coming through as new star guides, new spirit guides are coming online for people. So really pay attention around that time. If you have new guides coming into your awareness, into your field, making sure you're safely connecting with them, but There's a new chapter that I think a lot of mystical cosmic star souls are embarking on by expanding their star guides, expanding the teams in which they're working with and connecting with. And that's really made apparent this month. Then we have good old Gong Gong, one of the new minor evolutionary planets conjunct asteroid Horus, the divine child, which is going to be sextile the sun on December 25th. There's some type of epiphany that's going to occur around that day that really helps us increase empathy. Gong Gong's message is all about becoming a wizard of empathy, really. And Horus represents unity consciousness or Christ consciousness. So that's a beautiful day to connect with that energy. Then we have Homea, another one of the new minor evolutionary planets. It's going to be conjunct the Shapely Attractor, which is another galactic anomaly, even bigger and more uh, amorphous than the Great Attractor. Those two are going to be conjunct uh, all the way through the end of the year, all the way through December 30th. So there's this huge recalibration and regeneration that's really happening for us before 2025 begins. Uh, We're shifting timelines. There's a lot of really powerful things that are happening, big changes on the horizon. So just really want to empower people to not be afraid of change, to just really embrace that change that's coming and allow yourself to regenerate before we start that new chapter. And then, of course, we have the new moon at the end of the month conjunct Lyra and Pallas. So it's really helping us to recommit to being a spiritual warrior and to whatever our soul missions are, to recalibrate those, to realign with those, to deepen into our commitment to those near the end of the month. And then here's our calendar. Feel free to take a screenshot of this. Um, I do share it with my broadcast channel, the Starseed channel on Instagram. If you want to join and be a part of that, you'll get a copy of this. I'm figuring out how to actually get it sent out to my email list. So you can sign up for that too and hopefully get a copy of that in the next week or so. Um, So a few other key dates that I really want to highlight because I have some really interesting events coming up this, this month of December. Uh, I'm going to be launching my brand new Starseed Astrology for Beginners course. It's starting at the end of January, but I'll be launching it. So you'll be able to sign up for that if you want to learn more about how to decipher your entire celestial lineage like a pro, learn all the ins and outs of Starseed Astrology. I will link that below so you guys can take a peek at it and get signed up. Um, I also will be hosting a workshop through the Codes of Ascension. So I don't have the link for that yet, but I will link it below for you guys if you want to hop on there and join that. We're going to talk all about black holes, how to find black holes in your star chart, what they mean when you have them in certain placements in your star chart. That will be on the 17th, the same day as the Galactic Center alignment. So it's perfect timing for that. Um, I also have a really fabulous Cosmic Crystals course that I'm going to be making available on the 21st for the solstice. Um, So you can learn about the galactic origins and the DNA of over 77 different crystals and the star systems that they're connected to. And then, of course, um, early in 
January, I'm going to be doing the Starseed Auras workshop. I had initially scheduled that for the 30th of November, but hey, surprise, surprise, I have to move. So <laughs> we had to reschedule that one. Um, but just so you guys have those dates, I'll link the, all those different offerings below. Check them out. There's Some of them are free, some of them are paid, but check them out. Um, lots of cool things happening in the next month or so. And then I do just want to highlight some of the retrogrades that we have happening this month. We're already in the middle of Mercury retrograde. Mercury just stationed retrograde on November 25th, and it will be in retrograde motion until December 16th when Mercury goes direct. Um, we also have an overlap of Mars, Mars stationing retrograde, as I mentioned, on the 5th of December, conjunct the UFO galaxy the same day as Mercury retrograde Kazemi. So Kazemi means the heart of. So Mercury will be in exact conjunction with the sun when it's retrograde the same day that Mars stations retrograde. So this is a big day, Thursday, December 5th. I think just really the important key takeaways on that day are to work through any difficult feelings that come up around anger. You might feel slightly more inhibited in taking action. Sometimes your thoughts can be a little more jumbled. Their communication can be a little bit more difficult, particularly if you're not a natal Mars or Mercury retrograde person. Uh, if you do have those in your chart retrograde, sometimes they don't affect you the same way. The retrogrades just don't affect you the same way. You actually might feel like you aren't feeling so stifled or that you're even able to communicate more clearly. That's also a really potent day, December 5th, because of the alignment with the great attractor. So the best advice on that day is to spend some time in meditation, spend some time journaling, spend some time going inward. Mars retrogrades are wonderful because they really help us clarify our path forward. Sometimes, right, we have to slow down and really examine like, where am I going? What am I doing? How am I spending my time and energy taking action? Is that a line? How can I refine that? So when Mars does go direct, I feel more renewed and refreshed on the path forward. It's not the best time to start brand new projects, but it is a great time to relaunch old things that fizzled out or tie up loose ends to get closure, to just really reflect on how you're interacting in the world, taking action, how you're communicating too with the Mercury retrograde. It's a beautiful time to refine things and engage in re-magic, all the re-things, rest, revise, redo, rethink, all of it. <laughs> um, so pay attention to what's happening for you on December 5th, because that's a really big day with a lot of cosmic activations. Then Neptune is going to be going direct. Yay. Okay. On the 7th. So Neptune's been retrograde for quite some time, several months, more than four months, I think five months almost. Yeah. Um, so Neptune is going to be going direct. That will hopefully help us gain some clarity on any inner work that we've been doing around spirituality, around illusions, delusions, around higher octaves of love consciousness and spiritual consciousness as well. That's the same day that the Orion alignment kicks off where Orion will be very visible in the night sky for the Northern Hemisphere. Mercury, as I mentioned, is going to be going direct just the day after the full moon on November, on December 16th. And then we have a beautiful solstice day where the Ursid meteor shower peaks. So if you're able to go somewhere without light pollution, December is a great month to see some meteor showers. We have the Geminids on the 13th of December and peaks on that day. And then the Ursids meteor shower. Uh, that peaks all the way from December 21st through the 24th. So if you can, go see some shooting stars. Go see some meteor showers. It's a beautiful time of year to do that. And then another one of the retrogrades I really wanted to mention was Chiron. Chiron finally goes direct, and it's conjunct Tau Ceti in Cetus the Whale constellation. The Tau Cetians are a beautiful group collective, a consciousness of multidimensional beings that are really focused on helping humanity heal. And so now that Chiron's going direct conjunct that fixed star, it's a wonderful time to 
integrate everything that's been going on for you, any healing or awakening work that you've been doing over the last six months or so, now you can finally move forward. This is another one of the reasons why it's like, we're starting a new chapter. We're really wrapping up some old cycles, wrapping up some old outdated patterns, beliefs, behaviors, so we can start really brand new, a fresh chapter, a new cycle, a big shift individually and collectively near the end of December. So moving into 2025, like really feeling fresh and aligned. Those are the big ones I really wanted to point out for you guys. I also want to highlight some of the sacred symbols that I always put up here for each month. We have Apis, the bird of paradise. It's this tiny little constellation in the Southern hemisphere that doesn't get a lot of attention, but Apis has a beautiful energy to it. It's very colorful. It's very connected to the divine masculine. And it really wants us to be more colorful, you know, to really show our feathers a little bit, right? To not be afraid to ruffle some feathers sometimes, to really boldly, own who you are and show that to the world. We have the galactic fairies coming through, uh, very prominent around the solstice, but even that week before with the alignment with Atria and the sun that happens on the 12th right here, the same day that we have the opposite alignment with Columba, the dove. Uh, there's some just beautiful stars to go out and stargaze this month, as well as some big activations of energy from the elemental realm the unicorns, the fairies, the gnomes. Then we have the pine cone. The pine cone is often used as a symbol of the pineal gland, it has a similar shape, the way in which it opens or unlocks dormant information. So if you think of the pine cone as the pineal gland, and you think of the unicorn horn as the integration of that information that then can be shared, it's about receiving more light, through that center, that energy center, but also transmitting your light outward so you can share your magic. So you're not just receiving information, visions, sights, sounds, all of that. You're also able to share that cosmic multidimensional energy that you have coursing within you. You can not just receive messages, you can transmit messages too. So this is a big month for that. And then, of course, the cosmic man, Ophucus, the serpent bearer, the serpent holder. He has one foot in this realm, one foot on that galactic center portal. So he really is a symbol of our multidimensional consciousness, of the integration of all 12 of the zodiac signs. Some people even refer to him as the 13th missing zodiac sign. And I think that can very well be true in many ways. He's also more than that, though. He's like the integration of all 12 zodiac signs combined. Once we realize that you're not just your sun sign or your moon sign or whatever your starseed origins are, you're all of these archetypes embodied, unified in one. Ophucus really represents that for us. And so those key dates where Ophucus is popping off, particularly the 13th, are great days to remember your multidimensional self, remember your multidimensional nature and activate more of your multidimensional consciousness. You're everything. You're connected with it all through the unified holographic field. So those are our key dates that I really wanted to just point out for this month of December ahead. And then some themes and recommendations this month. So re-magic. If you haven't watched the Mercury and Mars retrogrades with the horoscopes for this coming cycle, please do. I'll link those below. But it's all about re-magic. Retrogrades aren't bad. They invite us to go inward and tap into all of those re-words, to revise, to reflect, to rethink, to release, to redo. And the overlapping period, the overlapping period that we have... Um, Okay, well, let me go back. What's happening? <laughs> the overlapping period. Here we go. The overlapping period that we have. There we go. Okay, so the overlapping period that we have, Mars retrograde with Mercury. It's pretty much the fifth 
of December all the way through the 15th. So it's like a 10 day period, right? Where we have both of those retrogrades overlapping Mars and Mercury retrograde. You want to be really mindful of those 10 days. Pay attention to the overlapping retrograde madness it might be a, you know, strong word, but there can be a tendency for people to lose their cool when those two things are overlapping. So just mind your P's and Q's, try to not start anything brand new unless you have to, and allow yourself extra time to rest. Be really mindful of who you're interacting with. Try to steer clear of toxic people, people that lose their cool easily. If you're one of those people, it's important that you spend a little extra time before you take action. Really think through before you take action on various different things. There's sacred rage and then there's toxic rage, right? So find a healthy outlet for anger, frustration, process old junk, or else that can kind of blow back and make us feel terrible. There's this reflections of the old and new. So it's good to reflect on your progress, Re redefine failures, right? Was it really a failure? Or was it a lesson? And let go, let go of all that shit you don't need to hold on to so you can really start this new cycle spanking fresh. And then we got big booty black hole shadow work is what I'm calling it because you need to gold mine your shadows, do some that multidimensional self activation when in doubt, twerk it out. You know, it's okay. Just throw some glitter on it and go dancing. Right. But also do the inner work. So do the inner work to work on your stuff. Try to not just project stuff all over people that tends to have bad consequences when we're in these retrograde cycles. And then we have the beautiful solstice, the return of the light. It's a wonderful month to celebrate your life. Celebrate everything you've achieved this year. Really be extra kind to yourself and activate your, your inner light a little more, right? There's so much darkness in the world and we need to really be beacons of light. We need to hold the frequency strong, clear, um, and in those higher realms so we can support the shifts that are happening right now in a sustained way. All right, you guys, it's short and sweet this month. Thank you so much for watching me. Sign up for my newsletter for weekly updates below. Please like, comment, share, save all the things. And hopefully I'll see you in one of my fabulous workshops or offerings this month. Thank you so much. Sending you guys galaxies of love and gratitude. Happy November. December. <laughs>